Uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, 10 o'clock. Welcome to our webinar. So I'm Martina Smith, uh, Technical uh, Manager from Shuttle Lighting. I'm in our lab in Pretoria. Uh, I'll be doing most of the talking today. Co-piloting co with me is uh, Stuart van Torne. He's in Johannesburg, uh, our Customer Relations and National Sales Manager. Then um, monitoring and moderating uh, in the background and uh, um, watching us from Cape Town is Tracy Stain, our marketing director, and Rich Smith, our CEO, where they manage our head office. So <clears throat> today, the, the, the purpose of this uh, um, webinar is to give you a very, very basic introduction into dimming LEDs um, and some of the problems we encounter. And um, then we go into a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, technical details. But because we have such a large, large variety of different disciplines of people online, uh, we try to give a, 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 a very balanced mix between technical and practical insula uh, practical problems. Um, we do have a, a very, very com com comprehensive, very in-depth, um, I think it's about, uh, it's about 85 pages uh, presentation just on dimming LEDs. Uh, that's very deep technical with a lot of measured waveforms and theory and et cetera. So if anybody is interested in that kind of depth, please just contact us afterwards and we can gladly arrange um, a, a seminar. So to give you a bit of a background, shuttle lighting has been involved in lighting controls uh, since about 1999. So we have a lot of practical and, and theoretical as well as uh, design experience uh, with been involved in many, many, many problem-solving exercises, uh, both here as well as abroad, etc. Now, we are based in South Africa. Uh, all our designs, all our manufacturing, component sourcing, everything from the wires to the labels, even the plastic bits and so on, either sourced or manufactured in South Africa. Uh, we distribute nationwide. We are one of the largest uh, uh, distributors of uh, uh, demos in South Africa. We do supply into neighboring countries, uh, but because we are so uh, um, um, well covered in South Africa, we make sure that all our products comply to all the national standards. Um, so we have the national regulators, um, letter of authorities for all our products, all our ballots. Uh, we export to uh, certain countries in Europe as well, and for that reason, all our products also have the CE and EU conformance, and exactly the same for Australia and New Zealand, where we export to as well. Now, all those conformances are publicly available on our website uh, for download. Now, just to give a background regarding our uh, demo range quickly before we start into the main main uh, presentation, which will be slightly, which will be, which will be about half an hour, um, and then we have a question and answer session afterwards. So, looking from the top left hand corner, we have our bell press demo range. We start with the 800 watt, 500 watt. 250 watt and 125 watt. And then we also have a uh, master zone controller. Now the master zone controller, that's a very fancy device. Um, it actually allows you to connect multiple valve press dimmers um, to one valve press switch and synchronize all the dimmers and control it as if it's one big dimmer. It provides you with zone and uh, um, scene control, very, very, very simple and very effectively. Um, all our dimmers uh, are universal dimmers. Uh, so it's suitable for leading and training edge and auto detect and et cetera, which we'll get to a bit later. Um, and then on the bottom, we see from the left hand, we see our, our classic 500 and 800 watt demos. Those are classic switch rotary demos. And um, it has a turn pot to turn the, 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 the demo on and off. Um, then we have our new addition to the family, the 225 watt uh, demo, that purple one you see there. It's also a rotary demo, but it has a, a push on off switch, like your car audio system has. It's a very soft push, and that same push can be used as your, um, uh, as a bell press switch. So you can actually do dimming all your settings from that switch as well. It's a, it's a truly integrated bell press and rotary dimmer. It provides you the best of both worlds. It's small, it, it fits into any of the S2000 type of um, face plates uh, universally. Uh, so all nine brands that you get in South Africa, for instance. Uh, that dimmer also has a, second, uh, third wire, a white control wire coming out of it. And that allows you to connect it to a bell press switch or multiple bell press switches and provide you with true two-way dimming and two-way switching um, in a bell press interface. Now, and lastly, we have on the bottom left-hand corner, bottom right-hand corner, we have our DC dimmer. 
That's a, a demo designed, 96 watt demo that's designed to work with low voltage lighting. Um, you connect it to a, a non dimmable transformer and you connect it to your LED strip light and it dims absolutely perfectly. Now, after the questions and answer session, we will have uh, two short videos. One is on the DC demo, just showing practically how it's installed and how it operates. That's a one minute video. And we also have a, a three minute video which demonstrates our new rotary dimmer and also demonstrates how our new rotary dimmer can be controlled, multiple dimmers can be controlled with our master zone controller. That's a three minute video and it's, I think it's worth the watch. Um, now, with all that format out of the way, uh, let's just quickly start with the main presentation. <laughs> Apology, I was just checking, um, making sure that I'm making sure that I'm still connected. Right. So, firstly, we start with how does a light emitting diode dim? Now, I'm talking about the actual component here. So, light emitting diode. As you can see there, it's those yellow components. Those are actually electronic parts. It's not a light. It's an electronic part, and it gives out light as a as a function, as a side function, essentially, from an electronic point of view. So those components are controlled with a constant current. It requires a DC current. Now, if you look at your at your classical halogen and incandescent lamps, those work with AC or DC voltages. You can. For instance, think about your halogen lamp that you have in your house. It works with AC voltage. Your halogen lamp that you have in your motor vehicle works from 12 volt DC. Um, it's very forgiving, whereas a lighting, a lighting emitting diode, the component, has to be controlled very, very accurately. So if you want to operate your lighting emitting diode from, 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 a, from mains voltage, you have to have a voltage to current converter, or as it's better known in the market, a driver. So any LED component is fully, fully dimmable. Even those small red LED indicators that we have on equipment that is fully, fully dimmable, but it depends whether you have a dimmable driver or non-dimmable driver. So now we look at how would the driver actually control the LED to dim it. Pardon me. Uh, thank you very much. So LED component is very easy to, 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 to dim. You give it more current, it's brighter, give it less current, and it's um, dimmer. So there are two ways of controlling that. First is your analog dimming method. Now, that is a very, very popular and a very cost-effective method of dimming your LED um, by simply varying the amplitude of that DC current you control your light output. Um, that is a very popular method uh, in, for instance, G10 lamps, any, any, any A60 lamp, any small lamp, because it's, it's, it's very cost effective to, to, to implement that. The are disadvantages to analog dimming, uh, but there are several advantages to that as well. Now, your second method is a digital dimming method. Now, one thing I'm talking about, the actual LED component, there's a digital dimming method, um, and most of the time, they use pulse width modulation. Now, with pulse width modulation, pardon me, is very simple. You supply your LED component with a constant current, but you turn that current on and off very quickly. It's very similar to the concept. You can think that if you have a, uh, a light in your, in your house and you turn that switch, the wall switch, you flick that very, very, very quickly, you actually get dimmer light. Now, if you can switch, if you can flick that wall switch quickly enough, you can actually reduce the intensity of your lamp and you won't even see it, but you can't switch that quickly enough with your finger. So with a electronic method, that switching happens between 200 and 1,000 times a second, typically. So if you supply an LED with a very short period of current and a long period of no current, your average current through it, as you can see with those dotted blue line there, it's very low and you have low intensity. So if you increase the, the time that the LED gets full current and decrease the time that it gets no current, that average current goes up a bit and you have high intensity. And so you go until you until you turn the LED nearly on for all the time and, and then off for just a small period of time and you have a much higher average current and a high intensity. So that is the basics of how a driver would actually control an LED component to dim. Now, there are, once again, advantages to digital dimming and disadvantages to it. Um, digital dimming is reserved more for um, external drivers because you have a larger physical space um, to do that. Um, and you do get some of the drivers, some of your higher-end drivers, which actually combines analog and digital dimming. It uses analog dimming um, for your high-intensity 
where it's more stable and digital domain for your very, very low intensity where you have more stability. Um, our DC demo, which we, which I touched on right in the beginning, actually uses a pulse width modulation method so that you can control your LED strip light down to about 1% light output without any flicker. It's very stable. Now, now that we know how your LED driver actually controls the LED component to get more or less light out of it, we have to, con we have to get some communication method to your driver to tell it how to how the user wanted to dim. So there are a couple of popular methods. Um, you get something like a, a DMX drive, a DMX dimmer, KNX, CAN bus. Even um, you get zero to ten, one to ten, etc. Now those are all um, bus type systems uh, and low low voltage type control systems. Um, and uh, that is a separate discussion uh, because that can become a minefield as well. So in this presentation, we'd actually like to concentrate more on face card dimmers. Face card dimmers are the most predominant in the market. There's an estimated 2 billion, 2 billion face card dimmers uh, installed in the world at the moment. So moving on to face card dimmers then, one of the most important questions that uh, people always uh, ask is, what is the difference between leading and training edge dimming? Now, it's actually very simple. If you look at this top waveform here, that is what the voltage looks like when it comes out of your wall socket. It's a beautiful alternating voltage. That's why it's called AC. And it, it alternates uh, either 50 times a second or 60 times a second, depending on which country you, you're in. Now, if you want to control the average voltage on your driver, which the driver then would interpret as a change in voltage and it gives through as a change in current to LED component, there are a couple of ways of doing that. So one logical way is that you actually cut part of your AC cycle out and you cut another part of the AC cycle out. That is a very, very simple and very cost-effective way and a brilliant way of doing it. And it's widely used in, uh, for instance, heater control, uh, underfloor heating, handrail, handrail heating, and all those kind of things. It's called integral cycle control. It's a great method, but it does not work for lighting because you do get flickering. Another method of doing that is if you, for instance, just decrease the amplitude of that waveform. You just make this the sine wave lower. That is also a brilliant method. That is probably the best method that you can do. It's called uh, a true sine wave dimming. Um, it's, however, very, very, very expensive. Your dimmer will probably cost you 20 times what, it, what an all-face car dimmer costs, at least. And your physical volume of the dimmer will probably be about 10 times the physical size of a of a face card dimmer, if not much larger. That is, a res that is a brilliant dimming method reserved for high, high, high end lighting controls, like in your uh, high end theaters and all those kind of things. So the most logical way to actually control your voltage on your driver is as we've actually seen on your digital method. So what you do is you actually, you, 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 you turn the, the, the voltage on and off onto your driver. So, for instance, we can we can we can turn it off here, and have voltage onto our driver here, and turn it off here, and have voltage onto our driver here. Now, as you can see here, so the driver has no voltage, and then it has a voltage and no voltage and a voltage, and we can we can adjust this time, which there's voltage or no voltage onto the driver to change the average voltage or the RMS voltage into the driver. That is called leading edge control. Um, your your off period, where the driver gets no voltage, will always lead the period where you where you have voltage onto your driver. This is just a classical method which is, which are, which has been used for years. It works great for halogen and incandescent lighting, but it does not work well for um, uh, electronic loads. Um, you see that there's a large spike here or a large voltage gradient and that voltage gradient um, always causes uh, um, buzzing other than a lamp or in the dimmer. Now if we synchronize that our driver gets full voltage, supply voltage as soon as the voltage goes through zero and in some way in the cycle we turn it off like we see here on the bottom that is that is our trading edge dimming. So training edge dimming is beautiful because it's very, very natural. Um, the, the driver gets, or the driver of them, it's, it's a natural rise, soft start on the voltage, and in some way in the cycle, it would turn off. And 
you can vary the position where it turns off and you increase or decrease the voltage onto your driver. So this is beautiful because your driver actually doesn't really rec realize that he's on a, on, a, on a dimmer because he gets the natural voltage soft start and then he turns off naturally. Now, trading edge dimming um, is better for electronic loads and which is also the re recommended method to dim um, LED drivers. Now, one of the big problems that one encounter as, as a dimmer supplier or as an as a LED supplier is how many LEDs can you connect to your dimmer? Um, if you, for instance, work with a 500 watt dimmer in the old, old, older times, you know that you can connect in theory or in practice as well, uh, 10, 500, uh, 10 50 watt halogen lamps, which gives you 500 watt. So logic would dictate that you can dim, that you can place, for instance, a 5 watt LED, you can place 100 5 watt LEDs on a dimmer. That hardly ever works. If your dimmer has uh, overload or short circuit protection, your dimmer goes into a protection method. Um, and if your dimmer don't have any protection, if you put 100 5 watt, 5 watt lamps onto your dimmer, your dimmer overheats and eventually burn out. So the reason for that is very complex, and I'll touch on, on, on that uh, um, now shortly. Now, the recommendation from Europe, uh, that's from your leading Euro European um, dimmer and LED su suppliers, is that you use your equivalent wattage of your LED. Now, you can see here, according to the CE standard, there's a, there's a method, and it's a, it's a quite involved method, in which you place your LED through a number of measurements to determine what its equivalent wattage is. Um, so we often see that the, the 5 watt with replacement wattage would be, let's say, for instance, a 70 watt. Now, that that calculation takes into consideration light output, but it also takes into, into consideration electrical characteristics. So unless your dimmer or LED supplier tells you what your maximum load is on a particular dimmer, you have to use that equivalent rating. So let's say, for instance, our, 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 uh, we have a 500 watt dimmer and we have, have this LED which the replacement wattage is 70 watt. Then you can place only seven of those 5 watt LEDs on a 500 watt dimmer because the equivalent is then 490 watt. If you place eight of them on that dimmer, you're sitting with 400, uh, 560 watt, which overloads your dimmer in theory. So this is a, a very, very limiting method, but that is the method that you must use if you have no other information. Unfortunately, your dimmer manufacturer cannot give you an answer unless he's tested the, the LEDs um, in his lab. Um, some of the dimmer manufacturers would, for, would, for instance, supply two ratings, saying that it's a 400 watt dimmer for, for halogen and it's a 100 watt dimmer for LEDs. But even that is very, very limiting, uh, as we'll see in the, in the next example now. So for that reason, Shuttle prefer to do the measurements, actual measurements. We characterize the LEDs in our lab and then we determine, based on our dimmer designs, what is the true maximum number of LEDs that you can place on a dimmer. So we've tested thus far in excess of 100 different LED brands, 100 LED brands, it's, it's unbelievable, and in excess of 650 individual dimmable models. And that's only the tip of an iceberg. I estimate that there are much, much more. Now that chart, the latest chart, is always available on our website for download. So here's an example of our chart. You can see here that we, uh, we list the, the LED brand, the model number, uh, the rating, and then the driver. If it's an internal, if it, whether it's an internal or external driver, it's an external driver will 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 list which driver we tested with, and then importantly the dimming mode. Yeah, uh, there are a number of LEDs, a limited number of LEDs rather, uh, which prefers leading edge uh, trading than trading edge uh, trading edge dimming. So we actually test for that as well, and then we list the the true number of minimum and maximum LEDs that you can place on our dimmer models. Now, what we've done here is to extrapolate some of the 5 watt LEDs, just as in, you know, just a couple back to the previous example. So you can see on the bottom here, this particular 5 watt LED here, you can place only nine of them. That's according to our actual, actual lab measurements, nine of them on the 500 watt dimmer. Whereas the one just above that, you can place 55 5 watt LEDs on the 500 watt dimmer. And you go up here is Example 50 cent, 50 cent, for instance. Now, importantly, it's not necessarily a, a reflection on the quality of the lamp, uh, whether you can dim more or less on them. Um, it's not to say that 
the, the lamp where you can only place nine of them on a 500 watt demo is a bad lamp, and vice versa. It, it all depends on how the lamp is how it's designed. So if we go into the waveforms now, now please, uh, if you don't understand the waveforms, don't don't be alarmed. Uh, simply watch the yellow waveforms. Now the red waveform that is the voltage that comes out of the mains, and that is what we apply to the LED lamp. The yellow waveform is actually what I call the DNA of a black box. It will tell you how how to haze because that's the current which the which the um, device draws. So if we look at the bottom here of our 50 watt halogen lamp, you can see that it's a it's actually a beautiful sine wave. Uh, going up and down evenly. And if you look at LED 1 on the top left-hand corner, you can see that its current waveform, that yellow waveform, looks very similar to the, to the, to the halogen that one, but it's just much lower. So you can imagine that you can place much more of this LED 1, uh, or LED number 1, on your dimmer than a 50-watt halogen lamp. If you go to LED 2, you can see that the waveform did change a bit. You can see that there's a the, the current has a bigger spike in the middle, and then you have sections where there's no current. So your current is actually con concentrated more in the middle. So immediately you can see that that your dimmer is subjected instantaneously to a higher current, and you cannot place the same quantity of LED number, number, number two on your dimmer as with LED number one. Now going further, LED three, you can see it looks very similar to LED two, but the current is even higher. Now in this in this example, you can see that your current is nearly as high as that of the 50 watt halogen lamp. That's the instantaneous current which your dimmer will see. Um, so of LED3, you can imagine that you cannot place 100 of them, if it's 5 watt LEDs, on a 500 watt dimmer because your current will just be super, super high and damage your dimmer. Now LED4 and 5, those are also typical LEDs which you get in the market. You can see the waveforms are completely random. If you zoom into that, it's just excuse them the word but it's just got a complete mess now these LEDs do not comply to any of the local or the international EMI standards um, unfortunately as you add more LEDs to your dimmer the waveforms just in interact and it, it it causes havoc so on these LEDs you simply cannot uh, load your dimmer very much um, once again, importantly, the waveforms is not a reflection, well, LED 1, 2, and 3, uh, which are very typical occurrences in the, in the market, both South Africa and, and abroad. Uh, it's not a reflection on lamp quality or uh, um, reliability. It's purely, purely how the lamp is designed. So that brings us to the ne next topic. Not all the LEDs dim in the same way. Um, and as we can already see on the waveforms, you can imagine that the waveforms differ so much that they will not them the same. Now, one of the biggest issues that we have uh, at Dimmer and LED suppliers is that there's no international specifications, absolutely nothing, to determine how your LED lamp must behave when it dims and how your dimmer must behave with your LED lamp. There are plenty of specifications um, to determine uh, for, for the fundamental electrical specifications of your of your lamp as well as your dimmer, but not for the combination of it. So you can imagine that if we have 100 different brands which we've tested, which I, 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 would, I would guess that it's, it's about 5% about of the brands out there which we have tested, um, if, if they all behave differently, you can imagine how many different type of lamps are, are out there. Um, and fundamentally, your LED lamp behaves differently uh, in dimming to your traditional incandescent and halogen lamps because it's an electronic circuit. It's not a piece of wire like your traditional lamps are. So you get a large number of different characteristics, which we'll go into a bit more details now based on practical experience. Um, but fundamentally, you need to be able to set your dimmer um, to accommodate certain characteristics of your LED. Um, there are various, various thought, thoughts of how you actually control your dimmer. Um, there are two, uh, a popular method, um, especially from overseas, um, is that your dimmer has a small turn pot that you use a small screwdriver to, 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 dim, to set your minimum, maximum, or set whether it's RC or, or RLC compatible and all those kind of things. Um, we, however, know that with your installers that work in, in sometimes in dark conditions, bad conditions, um, it, and, and etc., it, it, it's not always so practical to, to open a open a wall socket and adjust the adjust the tensiometer. We know so in, in South Africa it's a it's a it's a much more rugged environment. So the, the guys tend to overturn those that tensiometer, eventually break it, and etc. So 
for that reason, and another reason as well, which I'll mention now, Shuttle prefers to use a digital uh, a setting method. Um, it's 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 more reliable in our opinion because that small turn potentiometers can also get 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 uh, um, dust and dirt in it, and etc. And eventually start acting up. Um, but importantly, if you uh, do an installation in a house, for instance, and your and 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 everything has been painted and done, and then the 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 lighting light, the lamps get installed, and you do the testing and find out that 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 there's some setting that needs to be done. Then you have to open the, the wall socket, the wall switches again. I've seen so many examples in the field where the paint is actually damaged and uh, etc. So it's better to be able to do that setting uh, uh, non-intrusively. Uh, if you, for instance, do an installation in a hotel, let's say Sant and Sun with 300 rooms, and each room has three dimmers, and there's multi-way dimming in that room, and you now have to go and adjust your settings on the dimmer and open those all those wall sockets. First open the wall, one wall socket, find out, oh goodness, the dimmer isn't there, somewhere else it's installed in the ceiling and so on. It, it, it becomes a huge mess. Uh, thirdly, if you have a non-intrusive method of, in, of, of adjusting your, your, your dimmer, ideally, uh, it's very simple to do remote assistance. We've assisted so many clients on the telephone to just quickly do a setting and 30 seconds later and the problem is solved. So if we look at the practical uh, problems, um, the first problem that we encounter is that your LED don't dim far enough. Excuse me again. I'm slightly addicted to coffee, so excuse me for that. Okay, so firstly, your LEDs don't dim f down far enough. That is a, 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 a common problem, and your dimmer, LED dimmer is actually designed that it um, or should be designed according to IC safety specifications that there's at its minimum intensity, there's still a slight glow in your LED. Um, <clears throat> sorry, there's still a slight glow in your incandescent lamp uh, at minimum intensity. Now, very often, LED lamps are not designed in that way. And um, you get the complaint that the LED do not dim down far enough. So you must be able to to, to set your, your your dimmer. And if we, for instance, look at, at the way that we do it digitally, all you do is you press a button nine times, and your LED dims, and your your, your dimmer dims down by about ten percent electrical energy, which, depending on the LED design, is about 30 percent. 20, 30% intensity, that works great. Now we get to a more complex problem where your LED flicker um, or it turn off when it's, when it's dimmed. Um, you know, uh, depending on how the control circuit is, is designed, sometimes the LED does flicker at low intensity and it's unavoidable. Um, sometimes your LED flicker due to other reasons, uh, installation reasons, um, where we can also assist. Um, and a big problem is that your LED turn off prematurely. So with rotary dimming, it's typically not a problem because the client has a ten tendency to actually turn the potentiometer, turn, turn the wheel until the light is on. With bell press dimmers, it is a huge nightmare because you can imagine if your LED turns off prematurely. If you dim down, now your LED turns off. The client thinks that the dimmer is off. Now you want to turn the LED on again, so you press the button to turn the, the dimmer on, but the dimmer was on, now it turns it off. So irrespective of what he does, he can't get the LED on again, and you get the complaints that the LED lost, the dimmer lost its memory, um, it, it, it's not working, etc. You also get the other characteristic that some LEDs uh, which do not dim down, uh, or which are not designed to dim down so low, um, when you dim it down to low intensity, turn off and turn on again. It takes a long time for them to turn on, or you get a pop, pop, popcorn turn on effect, where one LED would turn on, like on another alley, you would turn, turn on and so on. You can actually see that happening. So that is a problem. Those are problems which we encounter across many different brands. And once again, it's not a reflection on the lamp. It's due to lack of specifications, essentially. Um, we do find that your filament pop LEDs, those are very often uh, designed that it turns off completely. In a large number of uh, filament LEDs, we actually find that the LED turns off completely when the dimmer is at approximately 30 to 40 percent, which is quite a high intensity. So what you do is you must be able to set your to, to adjust the minimum intensity of your dimmer. Now with the with the shuttle dimmers, it's very easy. You dim down to um, uh, the intensity, or you dim up to the intensity where you don't get the flicker in the lamp, or if it turns off prematurely, where the lamp turns on, and then you simply press the button 11 times, and your minimum intensity is set. Now. Uh, it, it, it's a good recommendation that if you do get those kind of behaviors on a on a on an LED, um, when you set your minimum intensity, turn the dimmer off, wait a couple of seconds until the LED is completely discharged, all the capacitors are discharged, turn on again. 
and just test that, that it is working because very often there's still a bit of charge left in the LED um, lamp and you turn if you turn off quickly and turn on quickly again, um, the, the lamp has residual residual voltage and <clears throat> sorry and you don't see the problem. So all the way a couple of seconds and test again. Um, then um, in very very limited cases, you do find that your LED flickers when you turn um, at, at 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 maximum intensity. But often you'll find that there's lighting specification which which dictates that your minimum maximum intensity must be a certain levels. So it must be uh, it must ideally be possible to set your maximum intensity as well. And with the shuttle dimmers, it's easy. You simply um, adjust up to up to level where you want. Press a button 17 times, and it's set. So if we I'm sitting with a scenario where we have to adjust the minimum intensity as well as the maximum intensity. You've actually changed your complete dimming range. Now, ideally, your dimmer should then always, irrespective of how you change your dimming range, must have a linear dimming curve. Uh, very often, you do. Very often, it's not the case. Uh, fortunately, if you do use the shuttle dimmers, the dimmer automatically recalibrates its dimming curve to always give you a, lin a linear uh, a dimming curve, irrespective of how you adjust your range. Now we uh, encounter so many other problems as well. Um, there are limited cases where your LEDs are designed for leading edge dimming only, and it's ideal, especially if you're doing a, a, a large installation, that you have a dimmers which you can set for leading and trailing edge operation. Um, and it's also useful, we've encountered a, a number of times, uh, to do fault finding in the field, if you're sitting with an unknown lamp or unknown situation, that you can set the dimmer to leading edge mode as well. So it's ideally, ideal to use a universal dimmer. Um, the second one is a very important aspect: um, inductive load, especially if, if you're if there's a if you're using a low wattage lamp compared to a high VA rating of your transformer. Let's say a five watt LED lamp on a 70 VA Y1 tra transformer. That inductive load will damage uh, trailing edge dimmer. That must be dimmed on a leading edge leading edge dimmer. Uh, we see that problem uh, quite a lot in South Africa, especially in, in the Cape Province, where there's a lot of retrofitting from the old halogen installations. Uh, people just plug their old halogen lamp out, plug their LED lamp in, and it's on a dimmer, and the dimmer simply pops. Um, so it's ideal that you use a, a dimmer which actually does auto sensing and. Fortunately, if you use the shuttle dimmer, it automatically senses the load and will switch seamlessly into a leading edge mode uh, control for you. Um, and then um, another problem which you encounter, fortunately not so much, uh, but with electronic transformers and low voltage LED lighting, uh, you do find that sometimes the electronic transformer goes into a minimum load condition, especially when there's a big mis mismatch between the LED wattage and the electronic tr transformer VA or wattage rate rating. So it's ideal to use a dimmer which has settings that you can actually set it specifically for electronic transformers, for instance. And uh, once again, fortunately, if you use the shuttle dimmer, we have two or three of those special hidden settings. Um, lastly, or second lastly, um, a special mention here is that if you use the external dimmable driver, um, if you, for instance, use a 700 milliamp, <coughs> excuse me, 700 milliamp lamp uh, um, rated at let's say 8 to 12 volt, then logically you would use a 700 milliamp driver, and you know which is rated for 8 to 12 volts as well. And on direct mains, everything works well. However, as soon as you start dimming it down, you get a flicker or it doesn't turn on properly. Now the reason for that is. As you start dimming down, your lamp voltage actually decreases. And we did some measurements uh, last night just to verify that again. And with that particular lamp, 700 milliamp hour, 700 milliamp um, lamp at uh, rated for 8 to 12 volt, if we're down to 10 milliamp, that voltage um, on the lamp is 7.4 volt. So the driver simply cannot supply the LED lamp with the correct operating conditions uh, if you dim down. Um, and especially if you have soft start in your dimmer, um, then you're sitting with a bigger problem. So the recommendation normally is rule of thumb. If you want to use an external dimmer wall driver for, for dimming your LED lamp, specify your voltage range, lower voltage range on your driver to be at least 10% lower than the than the uh, lamp requirement. So in this case, use a 7 to 12 volt instead of an 8 to 12 volt Driver. Now, lastly, this one is a very tricky problem, and it's a, we actually have a complete separate presentation on this, but I want to touch on it very briefly. It's with uh, UPSs and, and inverters. We often encounter 
uh, Flickr and complaints were that UPS is shutting down, flickering, and et cetera. Now, very importantly, when you use a LED lamp, irrespective of whether it's dimmable or non-dimmable on a, a UPS, make sure it's a true sine wave. This is, for instance, a quasi sine wave inverter uh, or simulated sine wave inverter. As you can see on these measured red waveform here, that's the voltage that we measured out of this device. And you can see here, it peaks at 400 volts. And if we have 10 8.5 watt LEDs as we had on, on this um, UPS, you can see that it has a 2.6 amp peak current, which actually lasts for quite a long time on this, on this lamp. Um, that is very severe. It will damage your LED lamp. You will have premature failures. Uh, you probably uh, do some long-term damage to your UPS as well. Now, if we look at the more technical aspect, uh, for the, any battery operated system, there's a quest factor, which should, shouldn't be more than about three, three to one. Um, and that's the ratio of your peak versus your RMS current. Um, the red waveform here has a five amp RMS current. The blue waveform has a five amp RMS current, which your multimeter will show you, but the quest factors are quite different. I'm not going into more details on this one. So here's a measured waveform on a true sine wave uh, um, inverter. Exact, uh, again, the 8.5 um, um, 8 watt LEDs, 10 of them. On the top waveform, you can see that there's no dimmer. And you can see that the yellow waveform is the current, which is actually quite nice. But then as soon as you put it on a leading edge dimmer on the bottom here, you can see that you've got a large peak current here of 13 amps. Your crest factor is 11.8. You are overloading your UPS significantly. Whereas if you go for training edge dimming, you can see that you're on the same, exactly same installation. You can see that your peak current is only 0.3 amps, crest factor of 2.2, very, very safe and very comfortable for your UPS. So there's no simple answer to make everything work. Um, the best that one can always do is to, is to interact with your demand your LED supplier. Make sure that you use good quality LEDs. Um, check with your supplier that it do comply to all the CE standards. There are so many fake CE uh, products out there. Um, if you're unsure, do a mock-up. Um, once again, if you are really unsure, um, please send us samples of lamps. Uh, Shuttle does free testing of all the, of, of the lamps, for example, compatibility chart, and etc. cetera. Um, so yes, um, I think that is the end of my story. I'm slightly over time. So thank you very much for the web webinar. Um, I'll take questions and answers now, and um, then please stay on the line. Uh, we will have a short video afterwards. Uh, I'm just waiting for my questions to come in. Uh, thank you. Um, okay, I've got a question here. Uh, the switch dimmer range, are they available? Uh, yes, um, all, of, all the dimmers that I listed uh, in the beginning, those, all of those are available nationwide. And um, like I said, uh, some of them are available overseas as well. Um, with the S2000 range coming to an end of life, uh, are rotary dimmers compatible with other switches? Uh, yes, they are. Um, there are we, we, we found nine different brands of S2000 style switches in the market, uh, South African market. For instance, your um, Lear, Lesco, uh, Alzema, and et cetera. So um, our road, the new rotary dimmer is compatible with all of them. Obviously, it can be fitted um, to any faceplate um, with, a, with a small eight millimeter, nine millimeter hole in it as well. Um, does the main rapid switching affect lamp lifetime? Supplies often state number of switching cycles. Um, Ms. Jamison, yes, that is a very good question. Um, yes, in theory it does, um, because when you rapidly switch your LED on and off, um, it creates inrush current, and that can eventually um, create damage to your longer-term damage or deterioration of your electronic components. Um, strictly speaking, if your LED is designed for for dimming conditions, it, it is actually designed for rapid switching already. Um, but it's it's always better to uh, once again use trailing edge dimming and especially a trailing edge dimmer with soft start because the trailing edge would actually um, 
sub subject your name to the list in Rush Current, and you're uh, uh, um, doing soft start. And um, with the soft, uh, with the planning edge domain, you actually don't have your in Rush Current, which you will have with your leading edge domain. So hope that answers. But we can wish chat about that afterwards. Uh, what is your preferred LED lamp used on your dome? Oh goodness, what is it? Preferred LED lamp used on your dimmers. Um, so that is a very difficult question. We we so we work with all LED suppliers and we are friends with 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 everybody. Um, it's very very difficult to say which is the best and which is the, which 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 is not good. Um, all the dimmers on or all the lamps on our compatibility chart. We have tested that it works well. Um, and unfortunately. Uh, because there are so many different brands involved, it's difficult to say which is better and which is which is which is not not good. It also depends on your application, um, what what type of uh, um, um, control gear your, for instance, prefer. Look, you look at the guarantees and etc. So unfortunately, that is a very very difficult question to answer. Um, how many demo models can be put into the same switch box? Um, so essentially. Um, uh, the international IC specification, which South Africa adopted as well, only tests for one dimmer per wall socket. Um, so we have a recommendation on our website that if you add more than one dimmer per, per wall socket, derate de the dimmer by a couple by 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 certain percentage because you want to avoid unnecessary heat build up. So uh, yes, you can add two, three. We even have people adding four, four dimmers in a, in, a, in, a, in one wall socket, but just derate. Don't don't run the dimmer at, at, at the full wattage, but you can find all that information on the data sheets in our, in our website. Um, and how many dimmer models? Uh, no, uh, I want to know if you have this presentation on our video that I can, yes, yes, sir, yes, certainly it's, it's available. Uh, we can send out to everybody. Uh, sorry, this, um, uh, what makes a driver dimmable or non-dimmable? Um, so that's a good, good question. It all depends on how it's designed. Um, the the um, um, electronic controls inside um, has to, on a dimmable driver, has to read the average voltage from your dimmer and then adjust its its uh, output current uh, 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 to dim your LED. Whereas a non-dimmable driver, which is then cheaper to to design, um, will not sense the input voltage, it will simply take your input voltage and convert that to a current. So it's all it's it's it, it's all in the in the design. You're very welcome to contact me afterwards as well, and uh, we we can have an in-depth discussion regarding that. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Boyle. Yes. No. Thank you very much. We can certainly send the video to everybody. Um, okay. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes left, so I think um, I just want to see how to stop this video. Uh, so I would like to now just show the two videos. The one is to the one is to demonstrate our shuttle DC dimmer, and then the other one is to demonstrate how the new rotary dimmer works and also works with the master zone controller. So um, I'll play those two quickly, and then we can just uh, finish off. In this video, we demonstrate the shuttle DC dimmer. It's rated at 96 watt, operates from 9 to 48 volt, and is auto sensing on the input. It's mainly used to dim low voltage strip lighting, 12 or 24 volt, but it's not limited to strip lighting only. It can work with some constant current LED drivers, but the operation is not guaranteed and must be tested. Here we have a normal non dimmable LED power supply. It has a 12 volt DC output. And that may as well be a 12 or 24 volt battery for RV and other mobile, mobile applications. The other side of the dimmer connects directly to the LED strip and the black and white wire connects to a belt press switch. These belt press switches can once again be doubled up and extended into multiple switch installations. Operation is the same as the AC dimmers. So Press button, hold and dim up and down. You can see the cycling is very, very smooth dimming down to a very low intensity. We have the soft start, the soft turn off, all the features that we have in all our other, other dimmers and the preset settings. Three clicks, for instance, goes to maximum intensity, works with dim this dimmer as well.
Okay, so that was the first video, and now the second video, this is one is three minutes long. Here we have the combined bell press and rotary dimmer. We have two in a face plate. Wiring is pretty straightforward. There's a red wire going to load, red wire going to live, and then obviously neutral going to the other side of the load. The means it is accomplished by turning the rotary knob, as you normally do with a rotary dimmer, or then pressing and holding as you do with a bell press dimmer. The preset settings are also available. One, two, three, lamp goes to full intensity. One, two, lamp goes to 50% intensity. And one, two, three, four, lamp goes to minimum intensity. As you probably noticed in the previous slide, there's a white wire coming out of the demo as well. And this is optional. You connect a bell press switch to the white wire and the other side of the bell press switch to live. This thing provides a functionality that you can do two-way switching and two-way dimming with this dimmer. You can obviously double up the switches and have multiple way switching. This provides true two-way switching and dimming, yet a primary rotary interface. Finally, we added the shuttle master zone controller to this installation. The master zone controller has four white wires. Each wire connects to an individual dimmer, and that applies to any of the shuttle bell press or combined bell press and rotary dimmer models. One can also connect different dimmer models to the same master zone controller, if so required. In this example, we have only two dimmers installed, so we don't use the other two wires. Should we have more than four dimmers installed, one can easily daisy chain multiple master zone controllers. The red wire from master zone controller connects to a bell press switch. The other side of the bell press switch connects to live. And we can easily daisy chain multiple master zone switches as well if so required. Now in the example of this two zone installation, by simply double clicking the master switch, the lamps are synchronized to 50% intensity. Now these two dimmers operate as if it's one large dimmer from this single master switch. You can dim it up and down, turn it on and off, all your programming settings and preset settings apply here. So if we press the button three times, but the lights turn on to maximum intensity and I can control it. I still have individual zone control if so required, or in the case of this external bell press switch, I still have individual control of each zone, but I can easily synchronize it and control it as it's one large zone. This gives you flexibility in an installation, like for instance in a TV room, in a conference room, and etc. But it furthermore provides you functionality um, which extends beyond zone control. If you, for instance, have a large installation where a single dimmer will simply not work and you can't get a large enough dimmer rating, you split the zone into or you split the installation into different zones <coughs> and install simply a master switch and control the whole installation as if it's one large demo. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Once again, we sincerely appreciate your time. Um, and if there are any further questions, please, you're welcome to contact us on our website uh, and there are telephone numbers as well, email addresses. Um, we are working right through uh, lock, lockdown, unfortunately not going out, uh, but um, anything else, please just give, a, give us a call. Thank you very much and uh, have a super weekend, everybody.